Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Anita USRN. Today I am going to discuss few questions related to pharmacology with its answer along with rationals. So there is a special gift for you all that is NCLEX related materials and resources. So 100 students each month will get free NCLEX related resources and online classes. For this, you have to subscribe my channel and fill up the form given in the description box below. So let's get started. Situation 1. A patient is diagnosed with hypertension and lisinopril is prescribed. What adverse effect should nurse warn the client to notify immediately to healthcare provider that might occur after taking the medication? Option 1. Rapid onset of confusion. Option 2. Palpitation and chest tightness. Option 3. Swelling of lips and tongue. Option 4. Dizziness. You can guess the answer. So the correct answer is swelling of lips and tongue. Now let's have a look why this answer is correct and why rest are not. So uh, this lisinopril, inarpril, ramipril are ACE that is angiotensin converting enzyme. So this drugs has uh, like uh, several adverse effect. So in minor adverse effect it can have cough, dizziness. However, the major adverse effect is uh, it can cause angioedema that is edema uh, or swelling in uh, face, tongue, throat and larynx. So if there is swelling it can cause airway obstruction which might be of fatal nature. It might even cause death. So this should be immediately informed to the healthcare provider. There is one fact that African American poses five times greater risk than Caucasian. This is an important fact that you need to remember. So the minor side effect of ACE are like patient can have dry cough, orthostatic hypotension or hyperkalemia. So these things should be ruled out but these things are not of higher risk. Option 1 and 2 are excluded because palpitation, chest tightness and confusion is unrelated to SCE inhibitor. Option 4 is orthostatic hypotension. So if there is orthostatic hypotension, the patient can have dizziness. So this is the common side effect. So this option is also excluded. Now let's go for situation 2. The nurse is carrying the client with chronic stable angina with under long acting nitrate isosorbide mononitrate. Which outcome indicate that drug is effective? Option 1. Client is able to perform her daily routines that is bathing, combing hair without any chest pain. Option 2. Client is able to sleep properly. Option 3. Client admits reduction in anxiety and stress. Option 4. Client's BP is 120 by 70. Guess the answer. So the correct answer is option 1. Let's see the explanation why the answer is correct. Nitrate isosorbide mononitrate reduces the incidence of anginal attack. So if there is reduced in chest pain, client may be able to perform normal daily routines, maybe taking bath or uh, combing hair, brushing teeth and all. So this uh, proves that drops is acting properly. But if there is increase in chest pain, this should be reported immediately to the healthcare provider. And uh, this nitrate has common side effect that is headache. So management of headache should be taught to the client by the nurse. So option 2 and 3 includes proper sleep, reduction in anxiety and in stress. So these are the positive outcome of any drug. So this is uh, good for the client but this is unrelated to the drug. However, this is positive outcome. In option 4, nitrates are vasodilators. So it talks about decrease in BP. 
So as this is vasodilator, decrease in BP is obvious, but we should monitor if the BP is um, really low. So we should monitor BP regularly. A nurse is educating the client who is under SL nitroglycerin. What is the most important thing he or she should instruct the client? Option 1. Stinging burning sensation when placed on, under the tongue. Option 2. Generalized uticaria with prolonged use. Option 3. Temporary blurring of vision. Option 4. Increase in tiredness. You can guess the answer. So the answer is option 1. So why this answer is correct? Let's have a look. Um, the stinging and burning sensation indicates that medication is potent and effective. So this indicates medication can be used further. However, if there is no sensation, then we need to buy new medicine bottle because this indicates that medication is no more effective. Option 2, 3, 4 are unrelated to nitroglycerin use. Let's see situation 4. A client is diagnosed with uncontrolled hypertension, diabetes mellitus and coronary artery disease and he is prescribed with propanolol. Nurse provides education to the client which statement by the client indicates that patient has understood the teachings. Option 1. It is important to monitor my blood glucose level while taking this medication. Option 2. I should stop taking my medication if I feel my hands and feet are cold. Option 3. I will take this medication every day with grapefruit juice. Option 4. If I miss the dose, I will double the dose next time. You can guess the answer. So the answer is option 1. Now, let's have a look why this answer is correct and why we start out. Option 1. And so, the drug given to the patient is propanol. It's the generic name that ends with LOL. So, the drugs that ends with LOL are beta blockers. So, there are several other um, forms of beta blockers that might be beta 1 blockers, beta 2 blockers or non-selective. So, this propanol is non-selective beta blocker. So, it blocks both beta 1 receptor as well as beta 2 receptors. So, what we need to know here is that uh, beta 1 receptors are especially present in our heart and beta 2 receptors are present in different muscles, especially liver and even kidney. So, uh, if the propanolol is given to the client who is hypertensive, then it acts on beta-1 blocker in the heart and thereby it decreases heart rate and also decreases blood pressure. But it has got other side effects like if the patient has comorbid conditions like and the, uh, the given patient is hypertensive as well as diabetes mellitus. So, first action done by the drug is it decreases the BP by acting on beta 1 receptor and also it decreases heart rate however it acts on other places like muscles in liver kidney uh, by blocking beta 2 receptors so in this case patient is diabetic so this drugs decreases heart rate so in diabetes case uh, if the patient is under medication of diabetes then uh, he or she might develop the chance of having low blood glucose levels. So we should monitor client closely. And what we know is that if there is decrease in blood sugar level, there is increase in heart rate. So we should monitor this kind of signs. But in this case, patient is already taking propanolol. It is blocking beta 2 receptor. So there is no increase in heart rate. Uh, so, we might ignore the symptoms. So, there is high risk of decreasing sugar level and uh, keeping the patient in risk. On the other hand, when there is decrease in blood glucose level, the process called glycogenolysis takes place. Here in this case, glycogenolysis does not happen. So, there is two risk factors here that is we cannot recognize if the blood blood glucose level is going down because we cannot uh, assess the signs of increased heart rate 
and there is no glycogenolysis taking place by which uh, there would have been increase in blood sugar level to maintain uh, the normal blood glucose level in the patient. So because of this condition, patient has high risks of going hypoglycemic. So we need to monitor blood glucose level very closely. So the option one is correct answer here. Option three talks about taking medication with grapefruit juice. Uh, so grapefruit contains certain chemicals that slow down the absorption of medicine. So it is not advisable to take medicine with grapefruit juice. So as there is decrease in heart rate, doubling dose may be lethal to the patient because this medication acts on heart, it decreases blood pressure, it decreases heart rate. So if we take double the dose as prescribed by the physician at once, then there is more chance for lethal condition to happen. There might be dysarrhythmias and person might go in very fatal situation. So it is not advisable to take double the dose than prescribed by the physician. Now let's go for second situation. Situation 5. The nurse suggests the client to take which of the following medicines with grapefruit juice? Option 1. Propanol. Option 2. Nifidipine. Option 3. Fosgamide. Option 4. Diltiazum. You can guess the answer. It's option 3. Now let's see why this is correct and why others are not. Grapefruit juice does not affect the absorption of frisamide. So it is advisable to take this medication with grapefruit juice. Propanol, as I explained earlier, why we don't take uh, um, it with grapefruit juice. It has got certain chemical reaction that might increase or slow down the um, absorption mechanism. So it is not advisable to take medicine with grapefruit juice. Option 2 and 4, actually it increases its action. It increases the, its level in the blood. So it's not as advisable to take medicine with grapefruit juice. These are the questions. Uh, so, as I mentioned in my beginning of the video, that I have a free gift for you all that is NCLEX related materials and resources for 200 students who are subscribed to my channel. So, uh, for this, you need to subscribe my channel and fill up the form given in the description box below. Thank you. I'll be making more videos related to and clicks related questions. So keep on watching and keep on supporting me. Thank you.